All right, well, at a time when small to medium-sized businesses alike are either dying or at death's door, Bernie Sanders wants to raise their costs even more, which will just kill those businesses that are left. So then all the people you're trying to help, instead of making something, are making nothing. Now, Bernie Sanders is advocating for a $15 minimum wage here, but if you go through a lot of the comments under this thing, unsurprisingly, people are saying that $15 an hour and, uh, you know, fight for 15 uh, that was a slogan from six or seven years ago. It needs to be 20 or $25 an hour now. So I'm not sure if these people remember or not, but $25 an hour used to be the hyperbolic example people would use to criticize the minimum wage. They would say, well, why not just go crazy and make it $25 an hour? And then, of course, the minimum wage advocate would say, you know, we know that high of a minimum wage would be damaging, so don't be absurd. Well, now you've got the Bernie Sanders supporters being absurd, advocating for 20 to $25 an hour minimum wage. So just play through that one in your mind. It's not difficult to do. Say you own a small farmer's market. You pay a 16-year-old kid to sweep up the floor and place fruits and vegetables and dog food on shelves. A 20-hour work week would mean every two weeks you'd be paying them $1,000. And that's just for one employee. If you've got five employees, you're paying out $5,000 every two weeks. That is $130,000 a year. Kiss that business and those opportunities goodbye. They're done. They're gone. Especially now when businesses are absolutely gasping for air. The ones that are even still around would not survive this. But there are some businesses that would survive and indeed right now are thriving. And that's the big businesses, the big corporations. A good chunk of their smaller competitors are already in the grave now, thanks to insane government policies across the U.S. for the past year. A minimum wage like this would seal the deal, and the very businesses and CEOs that Bernie Sanders constantly demonizes, well, Sanders himself would be instrumental in them acquiring vast sums of even more wealth and garnering a great deal more of the market share. And they'd have no one in their way. And their buddies in government, Bernie Sanders included, whether he realizes it or not. But their friends in government, keeping everyone else down under the guise of helping the low-wage earners out, would be the biggest benefactors to those large corporations. They would have Bernie Sanders to thank, and I'm not sure if he realizes that. And also, Sanders is again complaining about uh, the increase in net worth of Elon Musk, which you might as well just say all rich people. Yep, the net worth on paper of the super rich has skyrocketed. You tax them, they'll just leave or find a loophole. And it isn't as if the rich don't pay an astro astronomical sum in taxes anyway, far more than they should be paying. But at the same time, they do have far more net worth than I think they should have because that directly stems from, here we go again, the Fed. The one place that Bernie Sanders never mentions, even though I know he knows about it. If you remember, he uh, went in with Ron Paul on an audit the Fed bill, but then pulled out at the last second. So I know he knows about him. I know he knows just how uh, just how distorted they make the market um, become, but he never mentions them. But they artificially boost the stock market with low interest rates. And yeah, the rich on paper are going to become far more wealthy. I don't mind in and of itself rich people having tons of money, but in the U.S. right now, the rich have far more than they would if people demanded a free market and didn't stop until they got it. If you, as a leftist, really want to stick it to the rich, you can say you want to tax them more, and they're not going to like that, but start saying end the Fed to the rich people, and then you can really watch them shake in their boots, because what would that mean? That would mean that savings accounts might actually be worth something again, People, and by people I mean the common working class people, might sell their stocks and put it into a savings account. Or maybe they don't own any stocks and they just save a little and put that in the savings account. Um, you might see the stock market take a huge dip and those rich people will take a big hit. And the common working class, class people will have some capital and their foundations will be sturdier. They'll be putting a little money in the savings account and they'll actually be getting a good, decent return. And if they don't spend it, if they don't overconsume, and they actually practice some thrift, they'd be on really solid footing. And also, the Fed won't be printing off obscene levels of fiat currency. The dollar might actually be valuable again. And the rich and the connected who get to use that freshly created currency before it's gone through circulation and becomes deflated, 
well, they don't get that government-granted privilege anymore, and all those working-class people will soon have not just a rainy day fund, they'll have a damn rainy year fund. You've just diminished wealth inequality, and you've given a massive boost to the quality of life, and a massive boost to the material conditions of the working class, which is a huge concern of leftists. And you've just done that not by taxing people anymore, right? No taxation, no minimum wage, no central control needed. You've, you've done it just through actual free markets, which is completely antithetical to what we have now, despite what Bernie Sanders and people like him would tell you when they say we have some form of unfettered capitalism. Totally off base. But that's all for now. Like and subscribe. It really is a huge help. And uh, take it easy.